you go back there. I'm having a super hard time finding uh, just a standard uh, gas burner for one of these, you know, gas bottles. Like, I'm looking for the kind which you just uh, plop onto there, and then you have a little plate on top. And uh, I've been to Korout, I've been to Hong Kong, I've been to Bauhaus, and like, three different stores I don't remember, and none of them had had a simple gas burner. So if anyone knows where to find one of these in like the Esbor Helsinki area, I'd uh, be very interested in knowing because it, I will need to get one of these burners and I obviously can't do with one of those that uh, have a hose attached to them. I need one which plugs straight onto the bottle because I just don't have a space for anything else. And I know that these burners used to be all over the place. I know that my family up north has a million other things lying around, but I don't know where I've gone, I figured it'd be super easy to find one, so yeah, please let me know if you know. Alright, first real abroad night in the van. Uh, I ended up uh, grabbing a, a bit more cargo than I anticipated in a little bit this time. Someone got some electronic components there for fun. And uh, I added a, another rug to just cover the fender there, just to make it a bit nicer. Off pretty much the entire floor covered in you know, either shag carpet or blue rug. Nice, it's pretty nice. Uh, something I did uh, prior to arriving was uh, I put the heater on full blast when I was uh, just about to park so I got lots of warm air in the driver's uh, cabin. And uh, that seems to have worked great because we've got 15 degrees outside. Uh, but uh, in, inside, as you definitely cannot see due to it being shaded, but it's 19.6 in here. And I just got here, I've been indoors. So, I mean, it's very pleasant and warm and nice in here. Even though the ventilation has been running all the time. And I didn't even have all the insulation installed in the back in order to see something. So that's pretty okay. Time to get to bed. Just woke up. It seems to be a bit sunnier today. And we've got a plus and 23 degrees inside and 16 ain't outside. Insulation seems to be working quite well. I know I'll stall on the solar panel despite being parked in the middle of a city. And it seems we're going to get a nice sunny day, charging at 20 watts. Almost 30, even though it's quite early in the morning. That's... That's pretty much what I've peaked at uh, during the last few days when it's been really rainy and crappy. Hopefully we'll get a bit of a more charging battery so I can run the fridge again. Well, let's see if we've run into our first technical issue of the trip. So that LED is part of a starter inhibitor system on this vehicle. Uh, I've got no idea how it works, I think it might have some kind of chip in this key of some sort. And when I was doing some errands trying to find things, it started doing this. Oh, no, hang on, there it went off. Uh, it's done this thing where it just remains on for uh, in an indefinite amount of time and that apparently means that the starter inhibitor is engaged and the vehicle will not start. Let's see if it'll do it, do it again. Yeah, it's shining steady. Uh, it's going off for a while now. Uh, I, re I fixed it uh, temporarily by just reconnecting the battery but uh, while it was shining the vehicle would not start. It would, I could not hear the uh, a fuel solenoid engage. So it was just to prevent me from starting and it's never done this long shine thing before. At some stage or another it's uh, uh, remained on while I've started and dri dri driven the vehicle but it's never given me starting issues before. I wonder if it'll actually start up if I try now. Yeah. So it's working for the time being, and uh, I know the fuel cut of solenoid is super easy to bypass, so it's not a big deal. It's obviously just cutting fuel because there isn't any, anything else to cut, and there's only one fuel cut of solenoid, so I'm not too worried. I can fix that in an hour if I need to. On our second night abroad in the van, uh, everything's going pretty swimmingly. Uh, I did notice I had to actually 
tape this blackout in place uh, because I kept ripping it off in my sleep because the magnets aren't strong enough and the same goes for that one over there. I, when I wake up uh, this morning I had this one just dangling over me and yeah it's pretty difficult to avoid since the bed has to be squeezed and basically tied up against it so a uh, bit annoying but I mean it's not really an issue because I'm happy as long as I can basically remove that one for driving so I see something backwards that's just a nice feature and I have noticed that uh, I have to kind of uh, swap uh, sleeping directions depending on the uh, incline of a van. Uh, currently I'm on very flat ground uh, but uh, before if I try to sleep in this direction and the van is leaning forward I keep sliding backwards and pressing my feet up into a bulkhead and that's just uncomfortable <laughs> and there's virtually no slack like I'm 170 it's like 190 uh, total length at this height since the bulkhead is kind of leaning that way so it's pretty tight lengthwise, but it works. When I got in, we had a nice inner temperature of about two degrees above above what was outside, so that's not too bad. And it's kind of thundery and rainy outside, and really, really cozy. So with that out of the way, good night. And anyway, since I installed all this extra aluminium padded insulation in the back here, I just dubbed this half of the living compartment as sort of the, the ISS because it just feels so space-agey to be sleeping in this mirror-finished insulated stuff.